Good morning, Scott Davis from TechWise Group. Today is April 22nd, 2020. It happens to be Administrative Professionals Day, so please take a minute you know, and thank your administrative professionals. It's also the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, and with all of the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, the stay-at-home orders, uh, it's probably one of the cleanest Earth Days on record as far as pollution goes. Uh, if you've uh, you know, gone through probably your Facebook feeds or anything, you've probably seen, you know, from waterways that are cleaner than ever to air pollution being down. Uh, so definitely one of the cleanest Earth Days uh, probably recorded um, and all due to coronavirus and COVID-19. Google has issued a warning of a critical zero day in Chrome that allows remote code execution. Uh, if you want to look into it, it's CVE 2020-6457. Um, but the big thing with it is they're trying to keep a lot of the information internal right now until they can get the majority of the users patched. Um, the best thing to do uh, if you're using Google Chrome, uh, click the uh, three little dots, go to help about Chrome. You should be on version 81.0.4044.113, and it should resolve those issues for you, as Google is saying. That patch, that version, patches the uh, the zero day that's in 2026.457. Uh, Kino Map is a fitness app mostly used over in Europe, but it is in the U.S. as well. Um, they had a misconfigured database, database uh, and it exposed 42 million records. Uh, now, this is an important one, so I'm going to go through what all was exposed. So, full name, email address, gender, your exercise timestamps, date joined, and account activity. So, being a fitness app, it's probably tracking when you're working out what your workout routine is, how pounds, weights, you know, if you're running through the app. So there's a ton of personal, personal information that is being recorded uh, via that Kino map. So if you're using Kino map, reset your password, um, but also keep an eye out as just the amount of personal information uh, that's being breached here is going to allow for a lot of different uses to determine your kind of your personal puzzle piece of who you are. Um, I would look probably, you know, over the next 30, 60 days, maybe 90 days, uh, you know, you may start getting some targeted emails from fitnesses, from gyms, etc. Uh, it could be coming from the Kino map uh, database breach. Um, Hackers have been targeting hospitals, as we've talked about before, but they're also targeting the World Health Organization. Uh, recently in the dark web, some employee passwords have actually been leaked. Uh, so it's hackers aren't giving up. Um, it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. Um, hackers aren't giving up. Fishers aren't giving up. You know, the ransomware people aren't giving up. So there's just a ton. Protect yourself. Uh, keep your passwords to yourself. Always use a work password that is just your work password and don't tangle that work password with personal uh, banking, etc. cetera. Um, back on April 6th, uh, one of the first broadcasts I did, um, I mentioned the Small Business Administration was breached. Um, they are now reporting that up to 7,900 applicants for the EIDL program were breached. Uh, this included the personal information, including social security numbers, their income, name, addresses, contact info. So there's a lot of information there of the 7,900 people reaching out to the SBA for the EIDL. Ransomware variants. Um, I talked a little bit about this yesterday, and I want to get more in depth of it. Um, <coughs> yesterday I mentioned uh, Maze ransomware. Um, and how, you know, a group was, you know, hit by Maze. Um, but Maze isn't the only player that releases data online after ransomware. Um, some of the more known ransomware variants or the ransomware variants that I was able to find that release data online include Doc or Clop, Doppelpamer, Maze, Nefilm, Nemt, Ragnar Locker, Revel, Second net, second net, 
and Snatch. Uh, those are just a few of them that we've been able to identify that have publicly posted tied to the ransomware name that they are posting information. Um, <coughs> well, Doppelpamer uh, recently hit Torrent City, LA metro area. So in the LA metro area, Torrent City, uh, the Doppelpamer, which I just mentioned above, is one of those variants that release data or the group behind it releases the data that it locks. Uh, it locked the files, so the entire, you know, you know, Torrent City's data is locked. Uh, they then started posting that data immediately online. Um, they're asking, you know, for the decryption key and the removal of the files that are online and to stop releasing more data, they're demanding 100 Bitcoin. That's equivalent or approximately 697,000 US dollars. Uh, so just trying to, to put that into... A mindset you know take proper actions you know to prevent it because ransomware isn't just lock your files and pay the ransom to get the unlock key now it's you know you get ransomware you're dealing with breach response you're dealing with public information that may not should be public uh as well as having to pay to get an unlock key <coughs> oh pollen i hate it this weather needs to just get warm uh, Fishers are targeting Zoom and WebEx. This isn't anything new. Uh, we've talked about this previously. Uh, if you're using Zoom, if you're using WebEx, if you're using any online meeting tool, uh, just be careful. You know, Fishers know that more people are using it, so there's more emails coming out about it. Things as simple as your Zoom version is out of date, click here to update, or your password needs to be updated. You know, don't, you know, you get an email like that, go directly to the website. Uh, if you have to do a password reset, it's going to tell you on the website when you log in. Don't click the links in the email. So the last thing that I want to cover today is you've been fished. You know, what do you do next? And it's one of the common questions that I've gotten over the last few days of as we're talking more and more of phishing. Uh, obviously, if you're an IT company, if you're the IT vendor, if you're the IT department, you need to push security training. Uh, if you're not getting talked to about, about cybersecurity training, please reach out to me, scott at techwisegroup.com. I would love to help you out because it's going to become a requirement after all this. Um, it's already becoming requirements in states, uh, compliance and breach notification laws, uh, uh, industry compliance and requirements such as PCI, DSS, HIPAA, etc. So what do you do? First and foremost, contact your IT department. Um, they need to be aware of it. They need to be able to alert your coworkers about it. <coughs> Next, you want to reset your password. I think that's kind of obvious. Um, like I mentioned earlier, your work password should be used just for work purposes. So you should only have to reset your work password. Now, if you're not following my advice, and you're using that same password for everything, you're going to have to go through and change your password for everything. So it's a great opportunity for you to create different passwords for social media, banking, and work. Next, you wanna check your mailbox rules. If you're not sure how to do that, you know, a quick Google search, uh, but check your mailbox rules. And the reason I always recommend checking your mailbox rules is your mailbox rules is where it's going to be set up if they're coming into your environment and they want to capture emails, um, they're going to go in, they're going to set a mailbox forwarder and say, if email contains financial forward to something, something, something at gmail.com or something, something, something at something.com. Um, so mailbox rules are becoming more and more frequently used as these fishers are looking for a bigger prize. So they're looking to get your data. They're trying to get things exported. Uh, a couple of days ago, I spoke about uh, an organization that had an email breach that actually it was sending uh, the tag, I think was W2s or something because all the employee W2s that hit that mailbox were forwarded to a third party. Check your OneDrive for new files. So if you're using Office 365, you have OneDrive. Um, with OneDrive or in Google, it has the, you know, the Google Drive, but check your drive to see if new files were added. A lot of phishing variant, uh, you know, a lot of these phishing campaigns, what it's doing is it's attacking, attaching to you, setting up a mailbox rule, and then it's forwarding a new email out to your 
your mailbox list, your recent contacts, etc. And what it's doing to bypass a lot of spam filters is it's creating a legitimate file in your OneDrive, typically a Word document or an Excel document. And inside that document, it has a link to the malware package uh, or to you know the phishing you know website. So check OneDrive to see if new files were added. You want to check your outbound email filter. Uh, this is probably something more so that your IT vendor, your IT department is going to do. But check check the outbound email. See who is sending what and how much is being sent. Uh, you want to know just what is going out. And if you have to start notifying people that hey, email account was fished. You know we're not seeing any signs of anything as of yet, but you may have received an email. And the last thing that I recommend that you do is send an email to cywatch, C-Y-W-A-T-C-H, at FBI.gov. It is the email address the FBI uses to monitor these spam campaigns, these phishing campaigns, etc. So it's a good email account to send it to, um, just as a good rule of thumb. But ultimately, your IT department, your IT vendor uh, should provide you actually a what to do if you've been fished document. Uh, so if you're not getting that from your IT vendor, reach out to me, scott at techwisegroup.com. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Uh, but that is what I have for today. So happy Earth Day, everybody. Um, it looks like it's going to be a sunny day here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So get outside, take a walk, enjoy the sunshine, and I will see everybody here tomorrow.